Hello friends, today in this video, I'm going to discuss about the Meselson and Stull experiment to prove the correct or the actual model for DNA replication. Okay, so at first, the three models for DNA replication that are the semi-conservative model, dispersive model and the conservative model, which I already discussed in my previous video. So basically in semi-conservative model, in the, this is the parental DNA and at first the two parental DNA strand get separated from each other. It's separated from each other and each of those parental DNA strand act as a template to make new DNA strand. Okay, so here the new DNA strand, new DNA molecule contain one, one parental DNA strand and one new DNA strand. Okay, so this is the concept of semi-conservative DNA replication model and in dispersive model the parental DNA strand at first cut into different segments cut into segments and then those segments are copied into new DNA molecules and then after that those parental DNA segments and the copied DNA segments are mixed with each other and ultimately make two DNA molecules which are mixed which are, which are the mixture of parental DNA segments and the new DNA molecule segments. Okay, so this is the dispersive model and in conservative model, the parental DNA strand, the parental DNA molecule is conserved here and a whole new DNA molecule is generated. So that means the new D, the one new DNA molecule get both the parental DNA, parental DNA strand and another DNA molecule, another, another new DNA molecule get both the new, whole new DNA strand. Okay, so here no combination or no mixture is present in this DNA, in the parental DNA and the daughter DNA. Okay, so this is the conservative model. So now from these three models, which one is the correct model? So to prove that the Meselson and Stull show an unique experiment with the E. coli bacteria, E. coli bacteria cell. So at first, so now let's come to the main experiment of Meselson and Stull. Okay, so here at first, the bacterial cells, the E. coli bacterial cells, they grew those E. coli bacterial cells in a medium containing the nitrogen 15, that is the heavy nitrogen source. That means the, this medium, where the bacterial cells are grown, this media contain the nitrogen source and that nitrogen is the heavy nitrogen, that is the N15. But the normal nitrogen is the N14. So here they grown the bacteria with the nitrogen source, that is the heavy nitrogen. Okay, and after many generations, those bacteria, those bacteria uptake this N15 and incorporate it to make their new DNA strand. So after many generation, all the DNAs will contain the heavy nitrogen to make DNA components. Okay. So now after many generation, those bacterial cells are transferred into a new medium that contain the nitrogen source that is the N14, that is the normal isotope of nitrogen, which is the normal. Okay. So here, they are transferred into the new medium containing N14. So now all the DNA, all the DNA now start to uptake the normal N14 nitrogen to make new DNA molecules or to make the components of DNA molecules. Okay. So now after growing them in this medium, then each after each generation of this bacteria, they collect it and break down into break down those bacteria and collect the and isolate the DNA from those bacteria. So we break down those bacterial cells and collect the DNA from them or isolate them and then we run in, in a density gradient centrifugation that is the cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation. Now what is this? Now this cesium chloride density, density gradient centrifugation is that suppose this is a tube, tube and here a solution is present that is the cesium chloride salt solution. Okay, and here at first the DNA, isolated DNA is 
incorporated isolated dna is mixed with this cesium chloride salt okay and now this mixture or this solution is centrifuged and after centrifugation this cesium chloride that is a cesium chloride now this cesium chloride make a density gradient of this cesium chloride salt that means the density of this cesium chloride becomes low becomes lower from the bottom to top side that means the the density is higher in the lower region that is the bottom region and density becomes gradually low in the upper position okay so in the bottom position the highest density of the cesium chloride salt is present and in the upper side the lowest density is present of this cesium chloride okay so they make a density gradient from the bottom to top okay and the dna isolate dna which are mixed here they give a band where the cesium chloride where the density of this cesium chloride match the density of this dna suppose suppose this the density of this dna and the density of the cesium chloride is same in this position so here they give a bands here this dna gives a bands okay so this is the main concept of this density gradient cesium the cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation okay so now all over we can get three types of bands in this cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation we can get three types of bands depending on the uptake of nitrogen 15 that is the heavy nitrogen or the uptake of nit uptake of normal nitrogen that is the n14 that is the lighter dna lighter nitrogen okay so depending on this uptake of nitrogen different nitrogen they will give three types of bands because so now as because the nitrogen 15 is a heavy isotope so which dna contain the n15 that will be that will present in the bottom side because they are heavier because their density is high so they give bands in the bottom side so suppose a dna strand which all the component all the dna components contain the n15 nitrogen 15 okay and another dna strand its complementary dna strand all the dna components contain the n15 so the both the Com both the DNA strand contain the N15 DNA, N15 nitrogen. Okay, so they present in the bottom position, and that is the these bands for the N15 N15 DNA strand. Okay, so now now the DNA which contain the N14 DNA strand and N14 DNA strand that is the all the DNA components made up of N14 and this DNA all the components made up of N14 so the both the N14 N14 DNA strands density becomes lower than this N15 N15 DNA strand so they will give the band slightly upside of this N15 N15 DNA band so suppose this is the DNA bands for the N14 oh, sorry N14 N14. Okay. And now another DNA bands we will get that is the intermediate DNA. That means one DNA contain the N15, that is all the DNA molecule made up of all the DNA components made up of N15, and this time all the DNA components made up of N14. So the intermediate DNA will be present in between the N14, N14 DNA and the DNA strand, that is the lighter DNA strand. And the heavier DNA strand, that is the N15 N15, they will become present in the give the bands in the middle of this two DNA molecule. Okay, and that will be the that is the N15 N14. Okay, so now we can get three types of DNA bands from this density gradient centrifugation. Okay, so now let's come to here 
here after growing all the bacteria in the N40 medium then they start to uptake N14 and incorporate it to make new DNA strand and now after first replication when we collect them and break down them and isolate the DNA and those DNA are mixed with the cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation run in the cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation and ultimately we get a band that is this sorry the mesosonin stall saw a band that is the N15 N40 band that is the hybrid DNA or the intermediate DNA that means this band they get this band after fast replication cycle okay and in the next that is the after second replication cycle they got two DNA bands that is the one is the hybrid DNA that is the N15 N14 that means the intermediate DNA and another one is the lighter DNA strand that is the N14 N14 DNA strand so so they got two observed result and now now from these three models which model that means which model gives the same result with this observed result of this experiment that will be the correct model of DNA replication that means if the semi-conservative models result expected result is matched with the with this observed result then it can be it may be a correct model for DNA replication okay so now at first in the semi-conservative model the parental DNA which are present in the N15 medium so the both the DNA strand will be the N15 N15 DNA okay that is the heavy DNA okay so now after first replication cycle when these two DNA strand get separated so this red one is the parental DNA strand and that are the N15 DNA strand both are the N15 DNA strand and they act as a template to make new DNA strand which are the N14 and it is because it is N14 because now this N4 now this bacteria are transferred into N14 medium and they check the replication after first generation in the N14 medium so the parental DNA strand which are present in this medium that is the N15 and when they transfer it and check the check after first replication cycle that is that will be the N14 because all the all the nitrogen containing compounds of DNA uptake the N14 from this medium so the new DNA strand will be N14 okay so after first replication cycle we will get an intermediate band which contain one N15 DNA strand and one, one N14 DNA strand so after first replication cycle we will get a intermediate band for N15 N14 okay and now in next generation this DNA will be will get separated and this N15 DNA strand act as a template to make new DNA strand that will be the N14 okay and this this DNA strand that is the N14 get separated and act as a template to make new DNA strand that will be the N14 okay so same happened with this and now we will get two N14 N15 intermediate band and two new DNA bands in the second replication cycle after second replication cycle so here we will get one N14 N15 N14 intermediate band and one N14 N14 new lighter DNA bands after semi-conservative replication so here in semi-conservative replication we can see the expected result of this semi-conservative model is same as the observed result of this experiment that is here also we after after first replication cycle we get an intermediate band that is the N15 N14 and after second replication cycle we get and one lighter DNA band and one intermediate DNA band so this match with this semi-conservative model so from there we can say that the semi-conservative model is the correct model for DNA replication. So now why dispersive model and conservative model is, the, is not correct. So now let's talk about them. 
So at first, in dispersive model, the parental DNA strand, which are present in N15 media, that will be the N15, N15 DNA strand. Okay. So now, after fast replication cycle, after fast replication cycle, the parental DNA segments and the new DNA segments will mix up. So we will get the mixture of parental DNA strand that is the N15 and the new DNA strand, new DNA molecules that will be the N14 DNA strand. So at the end, we will get a mixture of DNA that contain parental DNA strand and the new DNA strand. So we will get an intermediate DNA because the parental DNA is N15 and the, no, and the new DNA is the N14. So we will get after fast replication, we will get an intermediate band of N15, N14. In the next second replication cycle, after second replication cycle, we also get a mixture of parental DNA strand and new DNA strand. So we will get also an intermediate bands here, but the thickness of this band will be more higher. It will be the, the, thick, the band will be more thicker because the number of DNA becomes high after each of generation. So the bands will be thicker. Okay. And as we can see that in dispersive model, the expected result not do not match with this observed result of this experiment. So we can say that dispersive model is not the correct model for DNA replication. Okay. So in conservative model, here we can see that the parental DNA which are present in this N15 medium that is the N15 N15 DNA strand. Now when they transferred in the N14 medium here the parental DNA is the same that is the conserved. So this, this, this will be the N15 N15 and the another new DNA molecule which contain the which use the N14. So the all the DNA will be N14 N14 DNA strand. Okay. So after fast replication cycle, we will get and we will get two bands, one for the N4, N15, N15 and one for the N14, N14. Okay. So now after next replication cycle, we will get a bands for this. That is the fast parental DNA strand. That is the N15, N15 and all are the DNA will be N14, N14. Okay. So ultimately in the conservative model, we will get one N15, N15 band and the other bands are N14, N14. But as after each generation, the N14, N14 bands will become higher. So the thickness of this band will be more. The, the bands will be more thicker. Okay. So as we here, we also see that the expected result of this conservative model do not match with the actual observed result of this experiment. So from this, we also say that conservative model is not the correct model for DNA replication. So ultimately, Messerson and Stull show that the proof that the semi-conservative model is the correct model for DNA replication because its expected result is same as the observed result which are present which they get here okay so this is the main experiment to prove the correct model of dna replication and that is the semi conservative model which are discovered which are proved by the messenger and stall okay thank you for watching this video